Hello everybody, this is Adam Rowe. I work for the Greater Louisville Association of Realtors in the MLS department, uh, specifically doing MLS support. So if you're a GLAR member, we may have spoken on the phone a couple times before. If you had any questions about Transaction Desk, Flex, Showing Time, RPR, or anything uh, technology related. Uh, today I thought I'd try to make a quick video. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes, uh, just showcasing a cool feature in Transaction Desk. Uh, that will allow you to send a transaction desk form to a client for them to fill out. Uh, this is useful in situations where, say, you take on a listing contract and you need the homeowners to fill out a seller's disclosure. Uh, this can be done all online, all electronically, and it is very efficient, a lot more efficient than having to print out the form, have them filled out with pen, and then scanning the document back in. Uh, so the very first step in this whole process, you'll want to log into FlexMLS.com. Uh, that's using the LOU dot and then your member number as the username and then the password that you've set. Uh, once you do that, you'll land on the MLS dashboard that you have set up for yourself. Uh, don't worry too much, but it looks a little bit different. Uh, these are all very customizable and there's a couple different ways to set them up. Uh, but the important thing is that we have this menu button in the top left. So we'll want to click into the menu and underneath this bold daily functions category, about six entries down, we'll see transaction desk. Uh, you may notice I have a yellow star next to transaction desk. That means I've favorited it, and that's why it shows up on my favorites bar at the top as well. Uh, so you could click either one of these, and it will take you to transaction desk. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And once transaction desk loads up, I'm going to want to start a new transaction. So I'll click on the house icon on the left hand side to pull up my transactions page and create a new transaction. I will just name this test five, just a random name. Uh, most people name it after the property. Uh, the type, this will be for this example, a residential listing. Uh, I don't have the MLS number for this yet and I want to be the listing agent. Uh, now of course you can use the wizard and I will do that today. Go ahead and click create and start this wizard process for a transaction. So here you would fill out uh, the street address. I'll do this real quick. Now you'll fill out uh, all this information that you have on the property. I'm, for efficiency purposes, I'm going to skip over most of this step. Transaction dates, if you have, you would also fill out. The contacts you would fill out, uh, for example, you may want to put in the homeowner's contact at this point. And once we get to forms, I'm definitely going to want to pull in the form that I'm going to be sending to my client. So I'm going to click Add Forms. I'm going to go into the Greater Louisville Association of Realtors folder. And I will pull in a seller's disclosure. So here down in the S is seller's disclosure property condition. I'll check off that circle and click Add. And of course, you would finish out the rest of the wizard and land yourself on the transaction dashboard. Now, at this point, I have my transaction made. I have a blank form that I want my client to fill out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. You could click on this quick access button right here, or you could also go to the right hand menu and click on the forms page. Uh, these will both take me to the same spot. So I click on the title of the form and open it in full page view. As you can see, it will auto-populate according to the details that I filled out in the first step of the wizard. And the rest of this form, I don't want to fill out, I want my homeowner to fill this out. So the first step in starting that process off, we're going to want to go up to the top middle, and you'll notice we have a couple of action items that we have at the top of the document. Uh, the one that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to hover over the file icon. We're going to drop down near the bottom to send. We're going to want to send this as an email. Now this page is going to pull up every form that you have pulled into your transaction. Uh, for this transaction, of course, I just have this one. So I'm going to check off the form that I want an email to be sent out. You could also do this uh, with multiple forms at the same time. Say I had an input sheet, I also wanted them to fill out. Uh, I can check off two forms uh, to email. 
Uh, but for this example, we're just doing the seller's disclosure. So I check it off and click OK. And at this point, we're going to fill out the information for the person that we want to email these forms to. Uh, so the name is not required, but I'll just go ahead and put in uh, an example name. You're going to want their email. It is uh, with the red asterisk. It is a required field. Uh, the email I have for you guys today, class at gmail.com. That will be our client's email that I just filled out right there. And if we'll drop down, we could also edit the subject and the message of the email. Uh, I like it just how it is, so I won't touch that today. Uh, but very important step right here. Uh, we want to make sure send as a link is what we choose here. And we also want to allow our client to edit these forms. So I'm going to check off allow editing of forms. Once I check that off, you'll see the expiration date is not something that I have to fill out. So I will go ahead and click in that box and I'll say uh, I want this form filled out and back to me by, let's say, next week. Now, just to reiterate, uh, we have the recipient's name. We have their uh, email. We are sending it as a link. We're allowing them to edit the forms and we have entered an expiration date for them to do that by. Now at this point, you could go ahead and click send and your client will have this form waiting in their email inbox for them to fill out. So if you look at this tab up here, uh, we're gonna kind of jump into the shoes of our client. So uh, now I'm gonna act as if I'm the client opening up my email from my real estate agent and I'm going to fill out the seller's disclosure that was sent to me. So as you can see, I have opened up the client's email and they have this email from Transaction Desk. Uh, it will look just like this, Transaction Desk document sent from Adam Rowe. So your client will click on that email and they will click on the form that you want them to fill out. See right here, one dot seller's disclosure of property condition. They'll give that a click. At this stage, uh, your client can type in any of the text box and check off any of the check boxes and fill out the form as necessary. Uh, so they could go through, uh, check everything off. I want to do the whole form. It's a little bit time consuming, but uh, I'll just put some examples in there. Heating system, maybe it's eight years old. Maybe the uh, cooling and air system is seven. Let's say the water heater got replaced recently. It's only two years old. So they are free to go through every single page in this seller's disclosure and fill them out, checking off all the boxes. And you'll tell them once you've done all these check boxes, you filled out this seller's disclosure and you're ready to send it back to me, uh, you'll just tell your client hit that save and exit button at the top of their page. So your client will see, thank you for using transaction desk service. And that will be the end of their involvement in filling the form out. So they're free to exit out. Now we'll jump back into the realtor shoes. Uh, you'll go back into your transaction desk. Uh, you might land, you know, on the home page a day later, just like this. And you'll say, "Okay, well, test guy said he filled out the seller's disclosure for me, so I'm going to pull up that transaction and see what it looks like." So you go back into your transaction. So I just clicked on the house icon to pull up my transactions list. I'm going to go into the transaction that we just made about five minutes ago. And once again, I could click on the form here to view it, or I could go to the right-hand menu. Uh, both will take you to the same spot. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this form name right here. And since our client just got that email and just filled it out, we should see every single change that he's made to it. Yep, so we can see all the check marks that our clients made to this form. Uh, we can see they entered in the age of the system using the check boxes, or the text boxes, and they used the check boxes on the right-hand side. So at this point, now that my client has filled out his own seller's disclosure and I now have it back automatically updated in my transaction desk, uh, I'm free to use this in a signing. All right, and so that's the whole process of how to send a transaction desk form to a client for them to fill out. I uh, hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.